Mulen Metina, Mulen Mulen Mulen, guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Zizi. We make lifestyle content on this channel mainly in the form of vlogs, but every now and again, we also do beauty related videos and a little bit of girl chat. So, if that is your type of vibe, please, please do consider subscribing to this channel. I promise it is a free 99, it does not cost you a cent. But it really means a lot to me as the creator and it just affirms by there is some kind of value that I create um, with the content that I produce here. So please, please do consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. Please follow me over on Instagram. I'm much more active there than I am here. So please do follow me on Instagram. I'm also Zizi underscore Moloko on Instagram. Okay, now that all those formalities are out the way, guys, I'm sure you can tell by the smile on my face and my background, we are back inside our house. We are back home, son, now after 84 years. Okay, that was, it was like five weeks. <laughs> but we are back inside of our house. For those of you guys who are new, we have been busy with renovations for the past five weeks. So from the 15th, 15th of April up until the 20th of May, we were busy with renovations and those renovations have come to a conclusion. Hence, we are back in our home. And like I promised throughout the renovation series, I will show you guys the after of the project that we have done. If you would like to see the before, I'm going to link a vlog somewhere up here um, in the cards. Please go ahead and watch that vlog so you can see the before of what we did on our home project. But in this vlog, I'm just going to show the after. I wanted to include the before, but it was just going to make the vlog too long. <laughs> so I'm just going to show the after and give you guys like a full empty house tour and show you exactly what the house is looking like. And then just to also give you a little bit of context um, and just to remind you guys of like where we're coming from. So my husband and I bought this home that we are living in almost two years ago. We moved into this home at the end of July 2022. And when we purchased our home, we always knew that we would renovate. How, what we did not know is exactly how much those renovations were actually going to cost. We had always hoped that within about a year or two after we move in, we would do like a complete over, overhaul of the house and renovate everything. All three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, living room, dining room, kitchen, scullery, like everything, 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 including our granny flat our one bedroom granny flat but when we started doing research and actually getting quotations to see how much renovations were going to cost we came to a very rude awakening and we didn't want to wait any longer um, to do our renovation so we instead decided to do a minor renovation project just so that we can kind of move on with other aspects of our lives we had always hoped that before we have kids and before we even finish our home that we would renovate um, but we just got to a point where we found like saving up the cash to renovate an entire house all at once we're going to take too long and we wanted to move on to the next phase of our lives hence we decided to do this small renovation project and in this renovation project, we basically went ahead and just fixed the things that irked us. So there were certain things in the house that my husband and I um, just couldn't deal with and really, really disliked. And then there was other things that ideally we would have liked to renovate, um, but we could kind of live with for the time being. So hence, we did this minor project that we did now. And this particular project involved the following things. So first and foremost, we decided to smooth out all of the walls in the house. If you guys remember, our entire house, internally and externally, was textured walls. And we really did not like that. So we decided we were going to smooth out the walls, replaster them, and obviously paint them afresh. We decided to get rid of our carpets upstairs. So the three bedrooms and the passage upstairs all had carpets. And we decided to replace those with wood-looking like tiles. I really love the look of brown floors against white walls. But 
but because of how much maintenance wooden floors are and because they're not as durable i instead decided to go with wood lookalike tiles and they are chef's kiss i love love the floors that i decided to go with we installed a new wardrobe so as you can see there but you should see it actually like in the tour so in all three of our bedrooms we uninstalled the wardrobes and then we only put in a wardrobe in this bedroom which is um, my current home office and we're hoping to make a baby's room sometime in the future when the lord wills and then in our bedroom as well we decided to like completely remake the wardrobe so we uninstalled the whole wardrobe including the carcass and put in a new one we also redid all of our ceilings upstairs so we ripped out the old ceilings that were old and crusty and the old down lights and we installed new down lights um as well as new ceilings we closed off some like awkward windows all throughout the house and the staircase downstairs in the living room the dining room the kitchen the scullery this office that i'm in as well as our bedroom there was like lots of tiny awkwardly shaped windows we got rid of all of those we decided to install a backsplash in the kitchen but um we actually ended up taking it out because it just didn't look right and we are still going to do a backsplash. you guys will see we're still going to do a backsplash but the backsplash that i had decided on didn't work so after it was installed i got it uninstalled and now we just have a wall there and i'm still on the hunt for the perfect backsplash and then we will install it probably in the next couple of months we also did some like um maintenance work as well on the house so for example we had to damp proof the walls downstairs like the in the dining room as well as the kitchen we had to damp proof our outdoor pool storage area we had to damp proof our patio and so retile it and we also had to damp proof the staircase that leads to our um, our swimming pool downstairs and then um we had to install a um a new gutter in a certain portion of our gutter because it was not draining water properly i forgot to mention that we also changed out all of the doors in the upstairs portion of the house so for the three bedrooms and the two bathrooms we took out our old doors and put in new like paneled doors and had them painted and additionally um this was not in the original plan but once we had kind of um smoothed out the walls and freshly painted the house the kitchen became a real eyesore and it was just kind of not blending in with the rest of the house so we decided to change the cabinet doors of the kitchen and do away with the old ones so we kept the kitchen exactly how it was like in terms of like the built-in carcass we just changed literally the doors and that really helped to elevate the kitchen and modernize it a little bit and i think now i can kind of tolerate my kitchen i used to really dislike the kitchen a lot but now i feel like i can deal with it for a little bit longer um up until we are ready for a brand new kitchen that is the renovation project that was done in the past couple of weeks we're really really proud of the work that was done here it's not perfect as you will probably see um, it has some imperfections but it's okay some of, some of the imperfections we've accepted some of them we are going to try and fix and touch up over the next couple of weeks this is not the end of our renovation journey we will continue with our renovation um, when the budget allows and when we are at that stage again we still need to renovate both of our bathrooms as well as our, our powder room downstairs we need to renovate our kitchen and when we do our kitchen we will also do all of our sliding doors and aluminium windows um, as well as our um, flooring downstairs that time has not come yet but it will come in due time when the lord decides to give us the resources we will go ahead and do that as well okay good day and let's get into the tour
is looking like we're so happy it's not perfect but we're really really happy and we're really really proud of where we have come and we're just so grateful for how far the lord has brought us now um we are gonna probably enter into the stage of finishing our home but before that we need to replenish some of our savings child um <laughs> So over the next couple of months, um, please bear with me. My husband and I will slowly but surely be finishing our home. But obviously it's going to take a while because we actually have to put together that cash. And you guys know how expensive renovations are and how expensive finishing is. We're just regular folks, but you know, we don't have the cash money to just go straight from a renovation project of this size straight into purchasing all of our furniture all at once. So like how everything else has been done, we are going to do the step by step and brick by brick but i really hope that you come with me on my journey of turning my house my beautiful house into a home i'm really excited i'm ready to go bed shopping i'm ready to go like um furniture shopping and curtain shopping and 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 um yeah and i hope that you will come along on this journey please 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 bear in mind that this is going to be a journey so please don't expect that in the next vlog we're going to be spending hundred thousand two hundred three hundred thousand buying furniture the room to guys the okay so now okay i have to get my coins i was hoping to maybe get some partnerships um so that i can finish my home but we'll see what the lord what the lord um provide and maybe yes i should actually try and bleed out these brands right? i mean these bleed out brands actually for some partnerships but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed that let's get into our vlog at the end i'm going to talk very extensively about how we went about this renovation the lessons that we learned my recommendations and i will share our contractors um details and do a thorough review of him and his work yeah enjoy the vlog guys
guys so the lighting of this Yandifrata. does this look right Wait, let me adjust it a little bit hold on hold on guys i'm trying to figure out the light of this thing because i feel like whenever i film it's so orange but molen betuna today i don't even know what day it is hold on today is a thursday it is the 23rd of march guys i feel like i'm a vlogger my energy and ability to vlog this week it's been sitting at zero baby it's been sitting at zero and i think it's a combination of different things one i think i think i don't feel confident in how i look my hair is a mess my nails are a mess and i haven't done proper feminine maintenance in probably over a month now so i look hella ashy so i don't feel good in just like terms of my general physical appearance two i think i'm exhausted yeah we're back in the house obviously as we spoke earlier but i think i'm actually quite tired we're in renovation mode for like the past five weeks and this is the first week of us being back inside the house and so I'm curtailing, curtailing, and I feel like I need to rest. Three, my house is kind of a mess. The kitchen looks nice and clean and tidy, but can I tell you that's because my helper unpacked this kitchen. Upstairs, I'm fighting for my life, breathing through the wound, trying to unpack my office, my husband's office, and our bedroom. Um, and I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know what to do and on top of that i have work that i need to do um i have a campaign that i'm shooting for nivea that's due on monday um and i haven't even planned out how i'm going to shoot that i haven't planned out like what my scenes are going to be what the like um angle of me shooting is going to be what type of story i want to try and tell through the content so there's also that that's weighing heavy in my mind so i think i've just been so overwhelmed this week hence I haven't vlogged but I thought today let me just put on my big girl panties and this Mindy see a family I just ordered groceries from Checkers and Bully so I'm waiting for them to arrive we're gonna do a quick grocery haul um, and then maybe we might like do house admin together if I still have the strength <laughs> after these groceries arrive let me see how far they are but with all that being said get what do I am so happy to be back in my house I'm so happy to be back in my house. I'm so happy to be back in my kitchen. My kitchen with my big countertops. I'm so, so happy to be back inside my house. Like, I wouldn't trade this for anything. Exhaustion and all, I'm a happy girl. I'm a happy girl. A really, <laughs> really, really happy girl. Um, yeah, we are still going to talk later in the vlog. I say, I think I promised in the previous vlog that we chat about... Um, kind of the lessons that I've learned through the renovation process and also give a bit of a review of my contractor and share his contact details that is still coming in the vlog I promise and this week also in the vlog and I am a lot so please bear with me we will chat about that I'm also still trying to decide if I should chat about the cost of these renos but like I mentioned in my last vlog I think indoor of talking about money and i think i think that's also partially why so it's, it's not the whole reason but it's also partially why i haven't spoke i haven't like created content on my money and purpose channel it's because i'm still trying to figure out like to what extent to share should i just make the content like completely abstract and like non-personal or should i mix it with my own personal like experiences and lessons on money um yeah and what level of educational content am i like willing and able to actually provide because i found that when i was creating for finance content email really triggers people and i guess i, I empathize why because sometimes it triggers me too not enough for me to go and comment negatively on people's content um it doesn't trigger me that, that deeply um but i empathize as to why but obviously it does now affect like what people are then able 
to share and the lessons that people are able to share um which is quite unfortunate because we have to censor ourselves so that people don't get like annoyed or triggered or yeah yeah because of their own like life circumstances which i get i get but yeah it does kind of spoil it for the rest of us you know for i'll make an example usne koko for example is somebody who talks about finances quite a bit like how much things cost and i'm so grateful for her content like i'm so grateful because sometimes like i i i see the stuff that she purchases and i think to myself oh my gosh i want to purchase that i want to purchase that um and it just makes the research process so much easier if i just know up front how much things cost because then that way i can know by is this my lane is this not my lane or is it something that i can purchase right now or is it something like if i really wanted that i might have to wait a couple of months to save up for um and it also just it's inspiring because it, it it shows me at least and other black women what's possible that for other black women and i always think to myself about you know what if that black woman can do it maybe so can i or maybe i can you know work towards something similar but i've noticed how people like have said so many negative things about her sharing the cost of things whether it's the cost of furniture or it's the cost of like a handbag or anything along those lines and it makes me so sad because now it discourages um usne koko from sharing whereas some of us appreciate that some of us appreciate that honesty both from like an information perspective and also from like a motivation perspective you know Yeah. Yeah, let me chat to my husband though. Let me chat to my husband and see. I think if he can give me the go ahead, maybe I'll feel a little bit better about talking about it. Um Yeah, but yes, sometimes when you feel a bit icky about something, maybe it's just better to not talk about it at all. Yeah. But I'll definitely give you guys lessons that I've learned from renovations and I'll share our contractors um contact details and then yeah. You guys can kind of request a quote from him as well. Yeah. I used the old dress at the flat your son I last name at the flat that we were staying at to make my order and then I got a notification oh difficult and I'm like it that I will I call order up can't you know my darling you left you you shipped the order to the wrong address let me see if I can make the order again but I doubt it because it's after six already But at least my Woolies order, I just checked if I chose the right address and I did <laughs> for my for my Woolies order, Sana. Yo. Okay, so I had to reprocess my checkers order, but it's still arrived today. I love checkers so much, man. Like, oh, checkers is the hill that I'm willing to end alive on. Diva tembile shem and like Woolworths. When it comes to their delivery services, they're so efficient. So my stuff came, um, and obviously my Woolies order came as well. Let's do a very quick grocery haul. First up, I got coffee pods, but I got like a couple of them to restock our coffee. My husband and I are lactose intolerant, so I got us some almond milk as well to use for our coffee. This is the vanilla flavored one, unsweetened. Is it unsweetened? Yes. Then I got some low carb mayonnaise, a big jar of sauerkraut. some truffle flavored olive oil some avocado oil this is my favorite oil to cook with of course itamate sauce i got a small thing of cream also for mashed potatoes i got two stinas of salted butter i got a bottle of honey some lactose free yogurt cuz the hubs and i are both lactose intolerant <laughs> got some feta cheese some lerpak butter this is the butter that i love most for sandwiches 
I got a loaf of sourdough bread, one bag of frozen garden peas, one bag of mixed roast potatoes, I think this is an 800, two bags of the veggie medley, this is broccoli, green beans, and baby marrow. I got two bags of cauliflower rice, one small bag of avocados, a bag of onions, a bag of itamati, and finally a bag of medium potatoes. Then I got a pack of 18 um, large eggs. I got us a rotisserie chicken to eat um, tomorrow. Some chicken pieces, thighs and drumsticks. A pack of lamb chops. I got a bag of some pork chops. A small packet of lamb mince. Two packets of beef mince. A very big packet of um, beef. Three packets of streaky bacon. And that is it on the food side. Um, I needed to get a little bit more than this because this was like the monthly grocery shop that I do. This is going to last us quite a while. I know it seems like a lot since there's only two of us in this house, but it's going to last us quite a while. Um, and then I'm just going to patch up tomorrow morning with the Isn't Dish with that because I, um, Woolies only has a limit of 35 items and I buy most of my stuff from Woolies, so I couldn't get I couldn't get more than this. This is the stuff that I got from Checkers. Aside from the coffee and the milk that I showed earlier, um, I got some cleaning stuff and toiletries from Checkers as well. You guys know how I feel about these. Your booty and clean. Unless you're using wet wipes. I do use toilet paper. This is what they look like. I adore this product. I've been using it for years. Um, and I buy it over and over again. It's quite pricey. So I obviously still use toilet paper. But this as a last finish. I got five of those because we still have a couple of these that are left over that we are taking to our flat where we were staying. I got myself a re-up of my roll-ons. These are the roll-ons that I use from Nivea, the black and white silky smooth one. The heel, the heel that I will analyze on, love these. Then I got some shower gels for the hubs and I. We both use Sanex. This is the one that I use, the Sanex Pro Hydrate, and then he uses this one. These two I feel like are kind of similar. We just buy separate ones just to distinguish them, to be quite honest, but they're really like the same thing. I got a three pack, go this way. I got a three pack refill of Estee Soft. So one of these fills up those two liter bottles. Um, obviously you just put this and then you put water and you mix it up. So I got refills of Estee Soft. And then I got um, a 2 kg of Skip. This is what we use to wash all, all our color clothing and our black clothing. And then I got a 2 kg of Ariel. This is what we use to wash our bedding and our whites and towels. That's the grocery haul. Let me call an the bag. Let's pack these away. to your heartache if you want to open your door mm. i'm feeling kind of lost when your mind is hiding whatever that is choking your chest i can see it in your eyes that you're shaking cause you're holding it Oh. 
quickly and I will catch up with you guys afterwards I have an appointment to fix the situation right here hope you can't see that I'm trying out a new spa Eve Luxury it's part of Eve on board
Lately my thoughts got me distant Darker days filling up darker minds Stuck in this room that keeps spinning Wondering how you been, where you hide Late night drinking, wishful thinking What if you were Feel. I don't wanna mess up your night. I don't wanna put up a fight. I don't wanna trouble you, babe. But I gotta say, I don't wanna waste no more time trying to shake the feelings inside. Finally, I made up my mind. Can't go one more day without you. I'm just not 100% sure about the color but that's my own fault because I chose the color but her work this nail tech so good I'm done guys I'm gonna go home I'm tired it's like almost two o'clock um I got my hair done as well not here um, I got my hair done yesterday and i don't know what it is but i feel like i'm not having good luck with braids and maybe it's time for me to like hang up the cloak hang up my boots when it comes to being a braid girl and just move on because i mean it's cute though i don't know i don't know guys okay am i just insecure do I just feel like I don't look pretty these days? What's happening? What's happening? Cause I feel like no matter what I do to my hair lately, it's just not working out. It's just not working out and it makes me so sad because I'm a pretty girl. I've always known I'm a pretty girl, but as of lately, some of these past maybe three months, I've not been feeling pretty at all. okay guys let's chat <laughs> let's chat i do kind of feel like this vlog was short but i did know that i was going to do this talking segment at the end of the vlog so i don't want to stretch the vlog for too long and then end up talking for it at the end and then you vlog like say two hours i want to avoid that okay so let's chat betuna um like i promised so i want to chat about one the process that my husband and i followed in, in order to renovate um, our house or to do this minor renovation that we did to the lessons that we learned from these renovations and a review of our contractor and whether or not we recommend him I made notes right here so I'm going to be chatting <laughs> for a while so please grab yourself a drinky drink if you need it and I just hope that my memory card is going to not disappoint me so okay so first things first i've decided that i'm not going to share how much our renovations actually cost for multiple reasons one that i mentioned in my previous vlog and earlier on in this vlog is that people get triggered and um people feel like they have to then say certain things in order to i guess make you feel some type of way and i don't want to have to deal with that but secondly i just don't think that the benefit necessarily outweighs the risk or rather i think i feel like the risks outweigh the benefit of me sharing how much these renovations cost and i just felt like if it's really 
like that important for people to know how much these things cost they can just follow the same process that we followed and get their own quote but yeah so i won't be sharing the cost i'm just not comfortable someone in the previous vlog did say to me that maybe i should create like a membership on my channel whereby people can pay like a monthly fee like a small monthly fee of like 20 rand or 50 rand or 100 rand or whatever and then i can discuss more like intimate topics on that on that membership like for example how much it costs us to renovate our home I think it's a good idea i think it's a good idea and maybe that will also just encourage me and incentivize me a little bit more to talk about like very intimate girl chat topics like dating and marriage and so forth yeah yeah but let me let me think about it let me think about it we will revert in the following vlog <laughs> we'll revert in the following following vlog and i let you guys know um if i'm going to go ahead with that idea and maybe i would feel a little bit more comfortable if i know that it's an enclosed space of like few people to share how much these renovations cost i don't know i don't know i'll think about it and then i'll let you guys know but in this vlog i won't be sharing the cost okay so the person that my husband and i followed in order to renovate our home so like i mentioned earlier in the vlog my husband and i bought our home two years ago and when we purchased our home and moved in here we knew that we were going to have to renovate this house what we did not know is how much it was actually going to cost to renovate the house we had to meet a couple of other financial goals before we actually got to the admin of getting quotes and actually figuring out how much money do we need to raise in order to renovate this home and when we did that we got a very rude awakening um when we came to re the realization that we were probably going to need close to a million rand to actually renovate this home and we figured that that's going to take us a very very long time to raise and in the meantime we were kind of not really enjoying our lives and our money to our fullest like ability because we're trying to pump so much money in not just meeting like our general financial goals but also trying to save up for these renovations and that was starting to frustrate us two we wanted to fix up certain things in our home before we had kids and we didn't want to have to wait like three years to raise that type of money in order to like start our family and then thirdly i was like very against the idea of buying furniture if i haven't yet renovated my house because i first wanted to renovate my house finish that that phase and then purchase furniture but I, I quickly came to realize that this is going to take a long time saving money to renovate this whole house like all in one go it's just going to take too much of a long time and so my husband and i decided to rather change the things in the house that irked us so there were certain things that we really really didn't like in the house and then there were certain things that we ideally would have liked to renovate but we could deal with and tolerate for the time being right and then we figured but it will be cheaper for us to just change the things that irk us finish our house start our family and continue on with our lives while we save for like a bigger and broader renovation project right some of the things that irked us in this house was the textured walls the wardrobes the fact that we had carpets upstairs how old our kitchen cupboards looked those are the type of things that kind of irritated us and we thought okay you know what those won't cost too much money at least we thought those won't cost too much money to kind of give a little bit of a facelift in the meantime so that's what we decided to do the process that we followed is that initially when we first thought that we were going to renovate the whole entire house we reached out to four different contractors who came over to our home they we kind of spoke to them about the project that we wanted to do they measured our space we told them the type of look that we wanted to achieve i had put together like pinterest mood boards to kind of demonstrate to them about this is the type of look that i would like to achieve and based on that they quoted us our quotes literally and this was before we decided to do just like a minor facelift when we we're going to do like a comprehensive renovation of our whole house i remember the quotes that we received ranged from about four hundred thousand to about nine hundred thousand rand when we realized that that was too much money <laughs> and to be honest the contractor who gave us a quote of four hundred thousand rand we felt like he terribly underquoted us and some friends had told us that sometimes contractors will underquote you so that they can get the job and only once you know things in your house have been demolished and you're like halfway through the project then they're gonna be like oh by the way you need another hundred thousand rand for that you need another hundred thousand rand for that you need another hundred thousand rand for that and now you're stuck in the renovation and you have no choice you can't back out but to cough up that money somehow so the one who was quoting us 400k 
we could tell from his quotation that he was under quoting us because we compared all four quotes yeah so we were not going to use him anyways the contractor that we were going to use that we ended up not using i think had quoted us something around six hundred thousand rand or six six something six hundred and something we were going to use that contractor to renovate our home but unfortunately when we reached out to him he was busy with a project in cape town so and in fact we reached out to him when we had decided we're just going to change a couple of things first and not do like the whole entire house and he couldn't unfortunately do our project because he was in cape town busy with a pretty big project so fast forward this was all last year when we got these quotations and then that is how we came to find the contractor which um my husband's friend recommended which is the contractor that we ended up using and his name is wellington he is from kfl construction that's his construction company we found this contractor because my husband's colleague had used him to renovate her apartment and then another colleague as well had also used the same contract to renovate her house and both of them were quite happy with the work that this contractor had done and so they both recommended the same contractor to my husband. My husband took the contact details and reached out to this contractor and he came over to our house and we told him wow, we had originally planned to renovate our whole house. We don't have the budget for that how much will you charge us to just change these couple of things here he evaluated our house looked at the project that we wanted to do um and then he also added a couple of things to what we wanted to do mainly because of functionality like i mentioned we had to damp proof certain areas of our house and waterproof them because of the water damage that had been done in those areas of our house he quoted us and that is the contract that we ended up landing on so that's the process that my husband and i went through in order to find our contract I feel like we're done and dead. Okay, okay. Now let's talk about the lessons that we learned during this renovation process. I made a whole list. I'm gonna talk about them one by one. First and foremost, I would say start planning your renovations early, right? And when it comes to funding your renovations, you kind of have three options. One, when you purchase your home, you can sometimes have the option of including your renovation costs in your bond. So let's say, for example, just, just as a hypothetical example, you purchase a home for 1.5 million, and then you know that you're going to need 500,000 Rand to renovate that home. You could ask the bank for a 2 million Rand home loan. But getting this type of assistance from the bank isn't always guaranteed. In order for this to happen, typically you have to ensure that the value of the property that you're purchasing the value at which the bank values your property that you are purchasing exceeds the purchasing price that you are buying the house for do you get what i mean so if for example you need um you're buying a house for 1.5 million you need a 500,000 rand renovation loan um you have to make sure that the bank values your house at 2 million and in that case it would be much easier for you to get a um, a home loan that includes renovation costs or you could just kind of negotiate with your bank that is an option that you can pursue that's not what my husband and i did the second option is that you could just save for your renovations cash so if you know um, when you purchase your home that eventually i'm going to need to renovate this house you can just start saving up the money from the time or whenever you're ready i guess you purchase your home and know that eventually i'm going to need to cough up 300,000 rand or 500,000 rand or a million rand and you can raise that money in cash. That is the option that my husband and I decided to go with. The third option is that you can just get a personal loan. So instead of getting the loan as part of your bond, you get it as a separate loan all by itself with its own interest rates and so on and use that money to renovate your home. The third option is the one that I don't recommend because this type of loan will typically attract a higher interest rate versus if you were to just get the loan as part of your bond. But obviously, if you get your renovation, if you if you fund your renovations through your bond, you are going to have a much higher um installment because you're taking a 2 million rand loan as opposed to a 1.5 million rand loan so you're going to have a higher um bond installment for like 20 years or the law or whatever the level of that bond is two you might attract a slightly higher interest rate because the more indebted you are making yourself the more riskier you are to the bank and so the more debt you try to take out the higher the interest rate you'll attract with that debt um, and that's one of the reasons why my husband and i decided to rather find our renovations cash we also knew that because this is not our forever home we don't want to take 20 years to pay off this house we always plan that we will try and pay off this house within eight to ten years and we didn't want to make the, the our home loan bigger than it needed to be um that's making it more difficult to pay it off quicker 
yeah so start planning early and decide early on how exactly are you going to fund your renovations are you going to fund them through your bond are you going to fund them through cash are you going to fund them through a personal loan Number two, get multiple quotes. The reason why, for example, we knew that the contractor who quoted us 400,000, and the reason why we knew that he was underquoting us is because we compared his quote to three other contractors. And we had kind of asked all four contractors for the exact same work to be done to our home. But there's so many things that that contractor did not account for in that quote that the other contractors did. So we could see about, okay, this one did not factor in the cost of the stone that's gonna go onto our countertops he just quoted us for the for the carcass and the doors of our cabinets you get what i mean he didn't quote us for rubble removal he didn't quote us for good quality paint because all of these other ones are saying paint is going to cost this much the like the actual material whereas he's like saying paint is going to cost like 20 percent of what the other contractors are saying so the reason we were able to come to that realization is because we had multiple quotes to compare them to so i think it's really really important to get multiple quotes when you're going to do your project don't be too excited and like you know the first country that you come across you get so excited because of all the promises that they make you the fact that they can make it happen on a budget contractors can be real crooks <laughs> contractors can be real crooks so please make sure that you do your research properly on your contractors and you only get quotations from reputable contractors with the proper certifications and licensing and you get multiple quotes in fact i would say the four quotes that we got were probably not enough i would recommend getting somewhere between six and eight quotes don't go with the first quote that you receive number three i would say have a vision for what you want to achieve and discuss that with your contractor the last thing you want is to get a contractor to quote you for something that they are envisioning and then and then towards the end of the project when you guys are putting in finishes you want like specific types of cabinet doors specific types of appliances specific types of paint and specific types of flooring and so forth and so on and a contractor had quoted you on different types of flooring that cost like half of what you actually want to achieve so i would really really say about before, way before you even start getting quotes for your renovation put together mood boards of what you want to achieve now well i knew for example that i love the look of light brown wooden floors against white walls i like shaker style cupboard doors like you see our our wardrobe doors and our kitchen doors are like shaker style i like shaker style doors which tend to be much more expensive than regular plain doors and much more difficult to construct so and hence they end up attracting a higher price tag so have in mind the type of look that you want to achieve with your final product and then get the contractor to quote you based on that look that you're trying to achieve another thing that can happen is that contractors can try and influence your preferences and i feel like if you already have in mind what you want to achieve the chances of that happening and the chances of you being unhappy with the final product and less if you already had a vision and then you instructed your contractor to try and implement the vision that you came up with use pinterest watch youtube videos follow home decor pages of people that inspire you and people who have similar taste to you and put together your own vision number four have a contract in place with your contractor have a contract in place that discusses the scope of the work how much the work is going to cost, the timelines of the work, the payment plan that you're going to have with your contractor. Have all of those things in place and get your contractor to sign that contract. Other thing that you can put in your contract is if certain things are damaged, for example, who is going to be responsible? Because for example, in our renovation, our contractor and his workers, like the, the workers who were doing the job, they broke so much in our house. Our wall sconces, for example, were broken. We had to replace them and it cost me about 3,000 to replace those wall sconces. Our beams, we have beams, like um, sensors across the house. Um, as well like in, in every single room and on every single door in the house that detect movement are the ones on the doors and on the windows detect opening and closing of doors and windows and then we have beams and sensors in the yard and in every single room in the house that detect movement and all of those things were feeding into our alarm system and those guys completely destroyed it they completely destroyed our alarm system and because we didn't like iron out but if you destroy certain things if you break certain things in our house who's going to be responsible for repairing them 
we have to then fix it like so now my husband has to get quotations to get somebody to come and fix our alarm system to come and put in new beams and new sensors all throughout the house and that is going to cost us thousands of rands so have a contract in place that outlines but if certain things are broken they break windows they break tiles they break this 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 who is responsible for replacing those things or repairing those things number five set out a payment plan with your contractor so that basically means but know how much money is due to your contractor at what point so certain contractors will say okay up front you need to give me 50 50 percent of the fee let's say he quoted you 500 thousand rand he'll say up front you need to give me 50 percent so you need to give them a quarter of a million rand and then when the project is about 80 percent done you need to give him another 30 percent and then when the project is about 90 percent done you need to give him another 10 percent and then upon completion you can give him the remainder of the money that is owed to him for the project so set out a payment plan with your contractor typically the contractors will require anywhere between 40 and 60 percent upfront if a contractor is wanting more than 60 percent upfront from you be very early okay number six be aware that things are going to cost a little bit more than what you anticipated i think i mentioned this throughout my renovation series of vlogs that people will sometimes say make a contingency plan of like 20 to 30 um 10 to 20 percent above what you are quoted by your contractor i feel like make a contingency plan of like 20 to 30 percent 30% to be on the safe side um, above what you were actually quoted um, for what the renovations are actually going to realistically cost. And then number seven, um, something else, else that I that we learned is that how much you pay for your renovation is dependent on your contractor, it's dependent on the area that you live in, it's dependent on the size of your house as well as the materials that you choose to use. So for example, if you stay in more affluent areas, more suburban areas, you are going to pay like significantly more money compared to people who live let's say for example in a township or in a less affluent area we did kind of learn this maybe like three or four years back when we were staying in our apartment and i wanted to get the apartment painted the painter that we actually used to paint that apartment was the painter that painted my husband's parents home and my husband's parents home a home is like a three bedroom two bathroom with a dining room a living room and a kitchen so the house is pretty big but we with our two bedroom small apartment ended up paying double what my um husband's parents paid to have their house painted even though our space was so much smaller we paid twice what they paid and that was purely because of area and guys we literally use the exact same painter because my father-in-law is the one who recommended that painter to us we use the exact same painter but he charged us twice what he had charged my husband's parents to paint their house so just be aware of that that if you live in, a, in an area that is more affluent than mine even if you use the same contractor you are going to pay more for your renovations um, and if you live in like a less affluent area you're probably going to pay less even if you use the same contractor i'm not talking about the ethics of that i also feel like that is wrong especially because i feel like the work is the same but that's just how it kind of that's just kind of kind of how it, it works Hey, I'm vlogging, so I oh, but... sorry, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, so how much you pay for your renovations is honestly dependent on the area that you live in, the size of your house. The bigger your house is, the more you're gonna pay, obviously, because a lot of the time these jobs, like tiling jobs, painting jobs, are charged on like a square meter basis. And of course, the materials that you choose. So if you choose for example, laminate wood flooring as opposed to tiles, you're going to pay something different. If you choose vinyl flooring as opposed to laminate flooring, you're going to pay something different. Those are the type of things that impact um, how much your renovations actually cost. Number eight, I would say choose your own materials. So my husband and I, for example, we wanted to avoid a situation of our contractor choosing like the cheapest materials possible. And so where we could, we try to choose our own materials. So you guys saw that I went shopping for our paint i went shopping for our tiles because i wanted to get the best quality possible for the price tag that we could afford because unfortunately when you just give all of your money to a contractor and you just rely on them to find all your materials for you they might not always get the best one the best quality because in order for a contractor to maximize their profit they have to keep the cost of your renovation as low as possible while extracting as much money out of you as possible so if they could they could take quite a bit of money out of you and still use cheaper 
materials so where you can try to have a little bit more control of the type of material and the quality of the materials that are being used in your project number nine is spec out your project in detail this was a mistake that we made even though we feel like our contractor should have done this because we're not construction people so it's getting dark outside the camera's getting on it's getting dark outside we're not construction people so we wouldn't have known but okay so when you're going to make a wardrobe for a person aside from like measuring the space um like the size of the wardrobe and making like a design what do you want drawers do you want shelves do you want hanging space and so on and choosing the actual finishes of the wardrobe you also have to speak out things like do you want your drawers to be soft clothes or do you want your shelves to be adjustable do you want a melamine board at the back or are you okay with just having a wall at the back things like that have to be specked out so i think my husband and i were just we from the time we got our call to when we started our project there wasn't enough time for us to sit down and discuss this project at length so i feel like once you've chosen your contractor sit down and discuss with them and ask them to spec out each and every single thing that they're going to do and the process which they're going to do it are your wardrobes going to be constructed off-site and then they just come here to install are they going to use certain types of materials are they going to make your cupboards soft close um, your, your doors and your drawers soft clothes are they going to make your shelves adjustable what materials are they going to use for the internal what materials are they going to use for the external are you going to buy your own handles or they're going to purchase them if they're going to purchase them what material are, you, are the handles and size of the handles going to be all those things i feel like need to be specked out in in detail and we didn't know that and so we just kind of let our contractor do whatever whereas we should have specked out those things with them um, at the beginning Number 10, things are going to take a little bit longer than what you anticipated. Our contractor told us that our project was going to take about three weeks. My husband and I booked ourselves into an Airbnb for 30 days for one month because we, we knew that these projects are going to take longer than what this contractor is telling us. And yes, we did have like a, a scope creep. So, so there were things that we added onto the project that then obviously a result in the project taking longer, like taking out the backsplash when asked them to install, uh, changing our kitchen cupboard door and those things added time but to be honest even if we had not added those things our project would have still taken longer than what the contractor said yeah because changing the cupboard doors and, and taking out the um, the backsplash was only about three days worth of work but our project took two weeks longer than what we had been told that it was going to take so Bear that in mind that things are probably going to take longer than what you anticipate and almost everybody that we know who's done renovations kind of says the same thing. Number 11, decide on where you will stay during your renovation projects. So for our own mental health and our own sanity, my husband and I decided that we were going to stay off-site. I think it was also because of the fact that we had to do floors and walls. The walls especially, we needed to plaster the walls and to paint the wall, prime and paint the walls. And so we didn't want to live in a house where like all the walls were plastered, were being plastered and painted while we were living here. And we have to deal with all those fumes from, from the primer and from the paint and so forth. So we decided to live off-site. But obviously that does come with a very hefty cost. We moved all of our furniture into our garage while we we're doing our renovations and we moved into a two-bedroom apartment during that time. We couldn't afford to get an apartment that was within our area because it was just way out of budget. So we had to go all the way to four ways to find a place, which we were relieved to be able to afford a place to stay while we did these renovations. But unfortunately, like we had to then commute my husband had to commute to get to work and it just kind of destabilized our normal everyday routine for those weeks that we were doing our renovations but to be honest if i were to do it again i would choose the same part of rather than living off site if you can bear to live on site you can obviously do that that's going to save you a whole lot more money but bear in mind then that the project is probably going to take longer if you're living off site because then they have they have to do your renovation like room by room section by section they can't do everything all at the same time Number 12, be careful of scope creep, especially if you don't have the budget. So if you are going to ask your contractor in the middle of the renovations by, hey, can you please change this? Or can you please do this? Can you please add this? Be aware that that's going to cost more money. Like <laughs> that's going to cost more money. And if you're going to add things to your project, before telling your contractor to do them, first ask him how much he's going to charge you and get that in writing. So for example, before we added our kitchen cupboards, I asked my contractor, if we change these kitchen cupboards, 
and reporting me once how much you're going to charge me to do that for me, including materials as well as labor how much is that going to cost and he said okay it's gonna cost this amount of money and we're like okay cool give us in writing give us a quotation in writing we're going to accept the quotation and then we made the payment and only then once we had accepted the the, the quotation and made um initial payment did we then instruct him to go ahead and change the cupboard doors so please make sure that before you add additional things to your project ask your contractor how much those additional things are going to cost and get it in writing because the last thing you want is for the project to come to an end and for you to be slapped with a bill that is completely out of budget and that you cannot afford and then those bonus will get up square late in order to kind of settle um that bill with your contractor number 13 very similar to what i just said any additions and changes that you do um during your renovation project may attract an additional fee please always get that in writing from your contractor before doing it before telling them to do it monitor and inspect the project as you go so that you can monitor the progress and the speed of the progress the quality of the work and so that you can be able to change things that you can see that you're not going to like classic example the cornices that were initially installed in our house i was the one who had selected those cornices when my and my contractor had shown me pictures of cornices and i selected the one that i want but once it was installed in my house i hated it and i needed it to be changed and luckily i had come to the house just after the installed it before they started painting it so i was able to say mm -mm, you keep on lento put in another one and if i was not inspecting the project and coming to the to the site almost on a daily basis i wasn't going to be able to identify things like that so i think it's very important to visit your site often to make sure that things are actually being done the point that the project is moving at the speed that you want because sometimes your contractor might not come to site and sometimes the guys might not move at a, at a good speed if the contractor is not coming to site so it's up to you it's up to you <laughs> as the person whose project this belongs to to kind of project manage um in places where your contractor might slap off and then last but not least guys jessica van heerden who is an, another influencer sure you guys know her mentioned when she was doing her power renovations but she has learned that renovations are man-made work so they are going to be imperfect and they are going to have blemishes and it's important to accept that it's important to accept the fact that sometimes the work is just not going to be perfect sometimes the brush stroke of the paint is not going to be in a perfect line it might have some wobbles there and there and that's just the nature of how renovations can be sometimes obviously some imperfections are better than others and you don't want like a shabby job but also leave room in your heart for the fact that this is man-made work and so it's going to have certain imperfections so you're going to have to tell your contractor to fix certain things tell the painters to fix certain things to do an additional uh, coat of paint to, to remove tiles and redo the tiling again and even after they redo it it might be better than what they did initially but it may still not be perfect so leave room inside your heart of the fact that the work might not be perfect so those are the lessons my jaw is even hurting the way i've been talking so much okay last but not least would i recommend our contractor the short answer to that is yes the longer answer to that is yes but you will need to keep tabs on the quality of the work that is being done and you will have to take on some project management responsibility the work that was done in our house we are like 98 percent happy with it let, let me actually just do like a pros and cons so that you guys can understand why i'm saying yes but <laughs> okay so the pros of our contract our contractor i felt like by the way our contractor like we didn't partner together they didn't give me a discount nothing like that I paid him 100% of the call that he gave us. I did not negotiate the fees. I did not um, ask for us to partner together for him to do none of that. Okay. We paid the contractor exactly what it was that he asked for. Okay. Some of the pros. At the beginning, the contractor was very hands-on on our project. He managed the team very, very well. He helped us to choose our finishes. He helped us to get discount codes when we were purchasing our finishes. And he was just very active and showed a lot of care into the project. Number two, his communication was excellent. Like, he would let us know 
um, the progress of the work almost every single day. He would let us know what the plans are. If things were going wrong, he'd let us know in advance. If there was going to be additional things that are going to come up, he would let us know in advance before implementing. And we appreciated that. So we were never really in the dark at least in the first like, two or three weeks, we're never really in the dark about what was happening on our project. He had a pretty big team and, the, and generally the guys worked really well and they worked quite hard. They were efficient when they were managed properly by the contractor. And obviously having a bigger team means that your project is going to be finished much quicker. Our contractor was also very well priced. He wasn't the cheapest that we got. <laughs> he wasn't the cheapest contractor that we got, but he also wasn't the most expensive. I would say he was like, he was like mid-range on the on the on the prices. He was also quite honest with us and upfront about what was possible and what was not, and he didn't try to sell us a dream. We felt like his quote was not completely, but to an extent, representative of what we needed to get done. And he was honest about things that he just felt like were not possible, and he was open to recommending to us. But mm, I don't think this is a good idea. I think we should rather do this. Upfront, we paid him a sixty percent like deposit or, or like upfront fee, and then the other 40 percent he only required it upon completion of the project which was a little bit different from other contracts as other contractors would want like either 50 or 60 percent up front and then when you are at a certain point they want another 30 percent when you're at a certain point they want another 10 percent and only at the end do you pay them like the last five to ten percent whereas our contractor said he wanted 60 percent up front and then the other 40 percent he wanted upon completion of the project he was also quite open to constructive criticism and feedback, which we appreciated. And he was also open to coming back to fix certain things. So for example, we were not very happy with our wardrobes. I'm sure you guys saw and noticed in our vlogs, but we had so many <laughs> with these wardrobes. And even to this day, we're not completely happy with how the wardrobes are. But by the time that we were moving back into our house, we were just so tired, so tired of fighting that we just let it be. But, our, but we did let him know, but we're not happy with how the wardrobes have turned out. And that is now deterring us from having to use them to do our kitchen. Um, because if their joinery work on wardrobes wasn't good, how can we trust that the joinery work in the kitchen is going to be good? Yeah, so he's willing to come back and fix and repair issues that we brought up before moving back into the house. He was also quite respectful and he was respectful to me as a woman. You guys I'm sure might have noticed um, I was kind of like the project manager of our renovations and our contractor was pretty respectful towards me and we worked we worked quite well together. Some of the cons, like I mentioned earlier, um, we felt like he didn't spec out some of the work properly. He just kind of went with his vision in certain areas. Some places he did like spec work out but on some like the wardrobes they didn't spec stuff out for us they just kind of implemented what they thought we do feel like in week four and five our contractor was kind of checked out of our project which irritated us a little bit but we figured about maybe he just had other projects he felt like were more important so yeah i just wanted you to be aware about that's a possibility that they can, that can happen. The joinery work wasn't very good, i.e. the wardrobes. Everything else in the house we were like mainly happy with, except for the wardrobes. We did feel like towards the end, our contractor was not doing proper quality checks. So for example, some of the paint jobs were like messy and I had to be the one to tell the guys that no, fix this. You need to redo this paint job because these lines are not straight. This is untidy. And I felt like I shouldn't have to be the one saying that that's why we hire a contractor who's going to manage the project and kind of work with the guys and instruct the guys accordingly we also felt like some of the unexpected costs that arose during the project could have been quoted beforehand so for example he quoted us to damp proof our patio but the staircase that leads down to our swimming pool he didn't quote us for but i specifically remember when he was inspecting our house and measuring the space he he was talking to his guys and they mentioned about all oh, the, the 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 staircase also has water damage and hence then i was confused about why did the quotation not include damp proofing that staircase why did we only include a quotation for damp proofing the patio when the staircase also needed to be damp proof and later on he mentioned about oh by the way you also have to damp proof that that's going to be an additional cost whereas you knew that up front that this was going to have to be damp proof but you didn't quote us for it so we felt like some of the things that um, some of the additional costs that arose that were not scope creep but this arose as they were doing the project could have been quoted for upfront. And then last but not least, and I guess this happened mainly because 
we were black working with a black contractor but sometimes i felt like i couldn't be completely honest when i was unhappy about things because our contractor would say things like and would kind of like sweet talk or soft talk my husband and i into letting certain things go which i felt like was unfair because like we're not friends and we're not family this is business we're paying for a service and the service has to be delivered and i guess maybe if we're working with a different race of contractor that wouldn't be there because it's a little bit more like emotionally far removed whereas when you work with people that could be your brother could be a cousin you do have to keep those things in mind and it's up to you then to like learn to be stern and to learn how to communicate effectively i do think working with a black contractor was worth it and working with black people will always be the hill that i will analyze on <laughs> <laughs> I will always choose to work with Amanda Bambiyama and it was worth it. It was worth it. It, it. It's so beautiful to be able to give business to black people, to be able to see black people do good work and excellent work. And if I were to do renovations again, I would choose a black contractor again and again and again and again and again. So that didn't deter me, but I do want like people to be aware of Uti that may be a possibility overall our contractor was excellent he was professional he was efficient for the most part he did good work not perfect work but the work was pretty good and he was very well priced would i would i use him again 1000 percent. would i recommend that people use him again yes but just be aware um, of all these things that i just mentioned and to be honest as much as i would use him again i don't know if i would use him again for joinery work so if I needed to do walls, if I needed to renovate my granny flat, to do floors, to do anything else, I would definitely, definitely um, hire my contractor again. With the wardrobes and just joinery work in general, I don't think so. And again, I want to reiterate, the joinery work wasn't bad. You guys can see, these wardrobes look nice. But if you inspect them like very, very closely, they have quite a bit of imperfections. And it's imperfections that I, that I personally feel like are unnecessary and could have been fixed, you know. And my father-in-law and my husband also feel the exact same way that I feel. So, yeah. I would use our contractor again for everything that we did in our home. But I do not think I would use him for joinery work. Okay, <laughs> we're done, did this one. I'm even getting a little bit of a headache. I'm going to end this vlog here. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed my renovation series. I'm going to put a playlist together that has all the renovation related videos. So if you wanna walk, go back and watch, you don't have to scroll through. Um, you can just go to a playlist that shows all the renovation related content. Okay, thanks so much guys for watching. See you in the next vlog.